As an environmental forensic biologist, I am curious as to the fate of the oil and its effect on the inshore fisheries, which lie between these offshore zones and the inshore marshes. These nearshore zones contain a wide variety of fisheries, but the one of most concern to me would have to be the oyster industry, because these organisms act as indicator species. This is a chart of the colors that the hydrocarbons will fluoresce under the UV light that we are using as a screening tool. And please note that the pastel orange and yellow colors are of much interest. Now let's take a look at some old oyster shells that were collected in early 2011. Yep, there we go. There's that pastel orange color that indicates the potential presence of hydrocarbons. Also of interest is the yellow color that is laid down on the inside of the shells on the upper part of these pictures. Now please remember this is what Bonnie Shoemaker was seeing at the end of 2011 and this is an oil slick near Breton Sound near the islands. Also this is a tarball that was caught by some shrimpers in August of 2011 and this is that same tarball under the UV light. Notice the pastel orangish yellow colors that we're seeing. Now let's take a look at some fresh oysters and see if we see that same color. Yep, there we go. There's the orange that we see in the oyster shells. It also appears to be covering the mussels that are just under the oyster. These are more of those oysters but shuck this time. And they were collected from St. Bernard Parish, which is Breton Sound Chandelure areas. Now just as these tarballs were collected 40 miles north of Macondo Spill, these oysters were collected 40 miles north of the main pass block and where that tarball is collected. Please note the yellowish brown color on the inside of these oyster shells. It reminds me of the colors that we were seeing from the tarballs. Now these are those same oysters under UV light. Now you tell me, is that the same color of yellow and orange that we were seeing before? Seems to me we're looking at the same colors. Now remember, this is what the tarball looked like under the UV light, and this is what the tarball looked like under standard light. Now again, here are the oyster shells under standard light. And if we look at this at a little bit more up close, we can see the yellow colors pretty clearly now. These are the same colors under the UV light. Now remember, this wasn't just one oyster. These were all the oysters in the sack. That's what startled me. Here's another view of the shucked oysters. Now please remember, this sack of oysters came off of a commercially harvesting oyster boat in St. Bernard Parish, August 2011. And it seems like all the shells are fluorescing under the UV light in some manner. While examining the inside of these oyster shells a little bit further, you will see an interesting pattern begin to lay down on the inside of these shells where the oysters are taking in mud that they're sitting in. The dark lines leading into the shell here is evidence of the oyster taking in mud. I find the fluorescent pattern that it leaves behind pretty interesting. This brownish yellow color is similar to what we were seeing on the tar balls. Also please note the fluorescent blue color which may indicate the presence of diesel. The UV light is a useful screening tool. It highlights potential hydrocarbon contamination, which helps us to know which samples to test. This is a chart provided by the maker of the UV light. It illustrates the colors of the hydrocarbon fluorescence. Please note that this blue color is similar to what we were seeing before. The pastel yellow and orange colors are also similar to what we were seeing in the oyster shells and also on the tar ball. Therefore, we can see the usefulness in the UV light in helping us to discriminate between samples with potential hydrocarbon contamination. Although it is extremely useful, it is not an exact analysis. For this, the oyster tissue must be sent to a laboratory. And thanks to the Louisiana Environmental Action Network, these oysters were analyzed. This report from the laboratory indicates that there were over 200 milligrams per liter or parts per million of total petroleum hydrocarbons and diesel was present in the oyster tissues at over 30 parts per million.